Hello, this is Dr. Marge, and today, after learning the steps in tooth preparation, we will now apply these steps in our Class 1 Amalgam Restoration. Remember, the outline form is the extension of the external walls to sound tooth structure while maintaining a specified depth and providing resistance and retention forms. We also want the preparation away from carry susceptible areas. So included in the outline form is extending the preparation to self-cleansing areas. Characteristics of outline form preparation should be centered or equidistant to the central group. So when you check your class one preparation, This dumbbell shape or H shape or butterfly shape outline form should be centered to the tooth. That means not nearer to the buccal or not nearer to the lingual. For example, some of the students would do it like this. nearer to the lingual. So it should be centered or equidistant to the central group. Remember, when you do your tooth preparation, you always check the anatomy of the tooth before you start the preparation. Number two, all major developmental grooves are included in the preparation. Primary grooves only. Secondary grooves are not included because most of the time, the caddies only include the major developmental groups. Number three, presence of graceful curves. Graceful curves, walang uka-uka. Dovetail, isthmus, lateral extension if indicated. Michel and distal walls diverge occlusally. This Michel and distal walls diverging occlusally is part of your resistance form. Resistance form is that form in your preparation which prevents stress to the tooth or the restoration, preventing it to fracture during mastication. This is the ideal outline for a very conservative class 1 amalgam restoration. It includes all pits and fissures. You may start the preparation on the distofacial and distolingual fissures here, extending to the other side. Never start your preparation at the center near the isthmus. Remember, in our previous video on conventional cavity design, if you start your preparation on the isthmus area and you made a mistake, it will get larger and it will be difficult for you to remedy your outline form. Tooth preparation with Michel and distal walls diverging occlusally. So Michel and distal walls diverging occlusally. So how do we check if the walls are diverging occlusally? We will be able to see the miso pulpa line angle and the distal pulpa line angle if the walls are diverging. Again, miso and distal walls diverging occlusally is part of your resistance form. In the book Art and Science of Operative Dentistry, we use the number 245 burr. The number 245 burr is a pear shaped burr. Pear shaped burr is somehow like a short straight burr with rounded ends. In comparison 
to the number 330 burr. 245 burr is relatively longer compared to your 330 burr. So one technique for you is to measure the length of your burr before you start the procedure. So more or less, you already know if this is already 2 millimeters, and that is the, the exact depth that you want to achieve. But then, if your target is 2 millimeters for your pulpal floor depth, you should start with 1 millimeter so that when you try to flatten the wall or the floor, you will get to 1.5, and then when you smoothen it, it will get a little bit more deep. Diamond burrs have different sizes. Round burrs, number one fourth, number one half, number one, or number two. They have also different diameters. So if your isthmus width is around one millimeter, you may measure the size, the diameter of your burr before you start using them. Straight fissure burr starts with number 56, the smallest, 0.8 millimeter diameter, and then gets larger, 0 0.57, 0 0.58 series. And then inverted cone burr starts with number 34, then you have number 34, number 35, number 36. In the book, a number 245 burr oriented parallel to the long axis of the tooth crown for entry viewed from the lingual aspect of the premolar. Look at the burr position and the burr blade in relation to central fissure is 1.5 millimeter or half length of the burr head. So measure first the length of your burrs, of your pear-shaped burrs, or your short straight burr before you start the procedure. In relation to the cava surface margin, your pulpal floor depth is 1.5 to 2 millimeters. Again, in relation to the cava surface margin, Your pulpal floor depth is 1.5 to 2, mm, 2 millimeters. In the actual patient, a reference point is always a DEJ. It should be 0.5 to 1 millimeter from the dentino enamel junction. So we also describe that as 0.5 to 1 millimeter into the dentin. You incline the bird distally, not more than 10 degrees, to establish proper occlusal divergence to distal wall to prevent undermining the marginal ridge. The distance from margin to the proximal surface must not be less than 1.6 millimeters for premolars. For molars, not less than 2 millimeters. Michelin distal wall should converge occlusally if, only in this case, when thickness of marginal ridge is more than 1.6 millimeters. Michelin distal walls must diverge 1.6 millimeter thickness of marginal ridge to conserve ridge supporting dentin. Resistance form, the shape and placement of the preparation walls that best enable both the restoration and the tooth to withstand mastication without fracture. Extending around the cusps to conserve tooth structure and prevent the line angles from approach, approaching the pop horns too closely. So here, in resistance form, you extend minimally onto the marginal ridge without removing dentinal support. If you remove dentin and there is no more supporting dentin in your enamel, it will fracture during mastication.
eliminating a weak wall of enamel by joining two outlines that come close together if they are less than 0.5 millimeters apart. For example, in this molar, the caddis is extended very near to the distal pit area. So this oblique ridge will have to be crossed during the preparation. Or else, you will leave a thin enamel in that oblique ridge. Establishing an optimal conservative depth of the pulpal wall using enameloplasty on the terminal ends of shallow fissures to conserve tooth structure. How do we check resistance form? Pulpal floor should be flat or following the contour of the pulp. Remember, in mandibular, first premolar, your pulpal floor should slope from the buccal cusp to the lingual cusp area. Pulpal floor should be smooth, should have uniform depth, and be placed at least 1.5 millimeter from the pit or 0.5 millimeter into the dentine. Define all internal line angles. All internal line angles should be defined but not sharp. Any sharp line angles in the preparation is a stress-bearing area. Enamel walls must be supported by dentine. Shape, ah, sorry. And then we go to retention form. Retention form is a shape or form of, of your preparation that resists displacement or removal of the restoration from tipping or lifting forces. Example, you have dovetail, you have buccal and lingual walls converging towards the occlusal. by 2 to 5 degrees, or even less than 10 degrees. And we go to convenience form. The shape and form of your preparation that provides for adequate observation, accessibility, and ease of operation in preparing and restoring the tooth. Characteristics, sufficient cavity width, and sufficient cavity extensions. So in your convenience form, your hand cutting instruments should be able to have access into the preparation. And that includes your, your filling instruments. And then we go to removal of remaining decay. So after... After doing the ideal depth, pulpal floor depth, and you still see carries, then we do this step. How do you remove? You remove with a suitable size round carbide burr. You remove with a sharp spoon excavator. Stop excavation when the tooth structure feels hard or firm. So, dapat sharp yung spoon excavator mo or hand cutting instrument. Baka mamaya, it's not sharp and then you will be telling your CI, Doc, it's already hard. And your instrument is dull pala. So, you remove infected dentine, extending pulpally from established pulpal floor. Using round burr and spoon excavator, to remove dentinal caries. Resistance form may be improved with flat pulpal floor peripheral to excavated areas. Cleansing of the cavity, uh, rinsing with air and water syringe, but we suggest, of course, in the previous video, for you to use hydrogen peroxide chlorhexidine, or betadine gargle. Thank you, and I hope you learned something today. Let's continue with the next.